assalamu alaikum in this video we are going to have a quick and summarize our view of digoxin i am your host mohammad talha my teammates are mohammad umar hamid akbar and mohammad raza we are meticulous pharma and here we are for mapping the future let's start with the pharmacognostic feature of our drug digoxin digoxin is one of the most used and it is the cardiotonic glycosidic drug available in the current market for the treatment of myocardial infarction and atrial fibrillation William Wittering introduced its use officially in 1785 it is also described as prototype these are glycosidic drugs having cardiac inotropic property uh, now we can see natural origin of digoxin it is also known as digitalis purple fox glove finger flower ladies glove fox glove leaves the concentration of digoxin is maximum in the dry leaf of digitalis lanata its botanical origin is digitalis lanata and part used mainly dried leaves no chemical constituents digitalis lanata and digitalis purpurea contain cardiac glycosides volatile oils fatty matter starch gum and sugars some of the main name in the constituents which should be discussed are digitoxin digoxin lanatocytes mainly a b c d and e flavones derivatives are also present that is lanatin lanatocyte is acetylated product of purpurea glycosides now the main thing is pharmaceutical chemistry of our drug digoxin has a molecular formula of c41 h64 o14 with the molecular weight of 780.9 amu it is a very complex ring structure and according to iupac naming it name comes to be like you can see here a long iupac name of digoxin the main constituent is glycosides now we will discuss glycosides what is glycoside a glycoside is the main simplest term and it can be described as a cyclic carbohydrate derivative with a very complex structure a glycoside can be described in different ways like a compound formed from a simple sugar and another compound by replacement of a hydroxyl group in the sugar molecule uh, it can also be described as naturally occurring compound composed of a sugar linked with another functional group with glycosidic bond now you can see the structure of digoxin and digitoxin in both structure the main difference is comes at the carbon number 3 in digitoxin where hydroxyl group replaces and this is the main difference between digoxin and digitoxin now come to the pharmacology of digoxin pharmacology is the discipline of drug body interaction which is used for the beneficial effect of the drug on the living system in precise wording pharmacology can be defined the study of substances that interact with the living system through chemical processes especially by binding to regulatory molecules and it can activating or inhibiting normal body processes all the pharmacology parameters of the drug of all types its uses action absorption metabolism and adverse effect when discussed in a holy solely approach it is known as pharmacology profile of that drug for the ease of study pharmacology of the drug we will distribute it in two phases pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic first we will discuss the pharmacokinetic of our drug pharmacokinetic basically it is the action or behavior of the body toward the drug or you can say the movement of drug within the living system in a single sentence it can be described as what does body does to the drug and further comprises of the following steps absorption distribution metabolism and excretion first we will discuss the absorption of our drug digoxin absorption is the movement of the drug across the membrane of the site of administration into the blood stream it can be through passive diffusion active diffusion facilitated diffusion or endocytosis and exocytosis absorption site of digoxin is the first part of intestine and approximately 70 to 80% are absorbed from there 
it has fast absorption rate and maximum concentration in the blood is obtained almost in an hour when a healthy patient is treated with a placebo now what is the term placebo it is basically a dummy of the uh, dummy of that drug or in other word you can say it have all the parameters of pharmacokinetics but pharmacodynamically uh, it is these parameters are absent in such dummy drugs absorption of digoxin through different routes vary from 70 to 80 percent such as uh, now you can see absorption that is 80 percent absorbed from oral administration of L, uh, L tablets 75 to 85 uh, 80 percent absorbed after administration of elixirs 75 to 80 percent absorbed from liquid filled capsule and 80 percent absorbed ion but it is not recommended because it is uh, the onset of action is very slow in the uh, intramuscular absorption factors affecting of digoxin uh, there are many factors which disturb the absorption of drug like meal if digoxin is ingested after a meal absorption is slowed but this does not change the total amount of absorbed drug if digoxin is taken with meals that is meal rich in fibers absorption may be decreased another is gut bacteria an oral dose of digoxin may be transformed into pharmacologically inactive product by bacteria present in the colon uh, almost 10 percent of the digoxin is destroyed by this factor another factor is p glycoprotein p glycoprotein is basically located on the cells in the intestine and may interfere with the di uh, digoxin pharmacokinetics and it is the substrate of this efflux transport p glycoprotein can be induced by other drug therefore reducing the effect of digoxin serum albumin concentration and body weight are also the main factor in the that disturb the absorption of digoxin now bioavailability of digoxin what is bioavailability bioavailability is the fraction of drug available in the bloodstream in the unchanged form main thing is it is in unchanged form which can exert its action likewise absorption uh, the bioavailability of digoxin is also good and almost 70 to 80 percent absorbed in the first part of small intestine by different route and dose the bioavailability of drug vary widely uh, the bioavailability of an oral dose varies from 50 to 90 percent other than IV however oral gelatinized capsules of digoxin are reported to have by availability of 100 percent dissolution profile of digoxin you can see in the graph that the release of digoxin with the time period in the bloodstream now drug distribution drug distribution is the leaving of drug from the blood into the interstitium and then the cells of tissues digoxin has a wide volume of distribution and it is widely available in the body and is known as to cross blood brain barrier and placenta digoxin is widely distributed throughout body tissues and has a high apparent volume of distribution of about 6 liter per kg now storage is of digoxin is digoxin is mostly stored in the skeleton muscle and large portion of digoxin is distributed in the skeleton muscles followed by uh, the heart and other one is kidneys in a large concentration it is present in the heart so that lower the mass of skeleton muscles in the body uh, in the lean persons it lowers the concentration over there now the main thing is metabolism of digoxin after drug distribution metabolism is the main factor metabolism is the chemical alteration of drug within the body the end result of metabolism is always inactivation but occasionally a compound with pharmacologically active activity may be formed uh, there are four ways in which activity of drug can be altered by metabolism such as active drug to inactive metabolites active drug to active metabolites inactive drug to active metabolites and last is active drug to highly toxic metabolites if i talk about the metabolism of digoxin metabolism of digoxin is independent of the cytochrome p450 system 
and not involved in the induction or inhibition of cytochrome 450 enzyme system a very small amount that is almost 10 percent of digoxin is metabolized in the liver via stepwise cleavage of the sugar moiety and lactone ring reduction uh, i have already told you in the pharmacokinetics slide or uh, when i will uh, i discuss the glycosides where the uh, glycoside molecule is formed from the two sugar molecules one is sugar moiety and other is non sugar that is lactone ring almost 30 percent of the digoxin is metabolized in the body by all metabolizing system and the rest is excreted in unchanged form the active metabol uh, metabolite of digoxin is dihydrodigoxin the clinical significance of dihydrodigoxin is as a metabolite remains to be resolved last but not the least in pharmacokinetic is elimination about 25 to 28 percent of digoxin is eliminated by no non renal routes the main route of elimination is renal excretion of digoxin which is closely correlated with the glomerular filtration rate in addition some tubular secretion and perhaps tubular reabsorption occurs the elimination of digoxin follows first order kinetics uh, in follows first order kinetics the amount of fraction eliminated depend mainly on the initial concentration of drug uh, most of the digoxin is excreted through renal excretion and in unchanged form as compared to biliary excretion which is of less importance half life of digoxin is 36 to 48 hours and increase in case of renal impairment half life is important to determine the excretion of the drug from the body and also helpful in achieving the steady state concentration of the drug and duration of drug action so as we have gone through pharmacokinetic of digoxin let's move toward the pharmacodynamic what is pharmacodynamic it is derived from two greek word pharmacon means drug and dynamicos means power when combined it comes out to be power of drug power in a sense is the ability to make physiological and biochemical changes in a nutshell it is behavior of drug toward body or what drug does to the body now if we have and understand the pharmacodynamic so we will discuss different parameters one by one the first parameter is mechanism of action of digoxin so what digoxin actually is or on what receptor it goes to to perform its action by studying the interaction of digoxin with body it come to our knowledge that digoxin is an enzyme inhibitor it inhibits the sodium pump in myocytes sodium pump is a sodium potassium ATPase which is involved in movement of sodium and potassium this movement of sodium and potassium indirectly control the level of calcium ion in the myocytes and this calcium is responsible for contraction that is inotropic effect now coming back to enzyme inhibiting effect of digoxin it blocks the sodium pump due to which the level of sodium ion in the cell increases and this increase sodium in the myocyte the increased calcium ion concentration in myocyte also occur the increased cal concentration of calcium is involved in the greater force of contraction that is positive inotropic drug here is a visual representation of blocking effect of digoxin on sodium pump pharmacological action of digoxin digoxin is a truly cardiotonic glycoside but some action is also shown on blood vessels kidneys and cns but it is not used for effect on this cell it is given under proper surveillance and monitored 
conditions now we will discuss cardiotonic effect of digoxin which can be achieved by different means such as myocardial contracted contractility electrophysiological properties in addition it has vagomimetic action among the maintained one important is improvement in myocardial contractive contractility force of contraction one of the most common cause of heart failure is the problem in contractility of ventricle with low force of contraction so such type of heart failure in which drug is dealing with a low force of contraction or negative inotropic effect it is termed as systolic heart failure contraction phase is shortened and relaxation phase of ventricle is prolonged in such type of heart failure when a normal heart is subjected to increased impedance to outflow it generates increased tension so that stroke volume is maintained up to considerably higher value of impedance while the failing heart is not able to do so and stroke volume progressively decreases the digitalized failing heart regions some of its capacity to contract more forcefully by blocking sodium pump increase in sodium and calcium concentration when subjected to increased resistance to ejection we will see a comparison between normal digitalizing and a failing heart contractility in the next slide first we discuss the phys uh, electrophysiological properties among all the organ in the body heart have the most electrical electrically active which is also affected by the action of digoxin some of which are action potential the effect of action potential it reduces resting membrane potential the action potential will reach earlier which in turn reduce the action potential duration and also the workload is reduced and increase in the efficacy of the heart then conduction the conduction through the arteriovenicular node is slow to allow the atria to pump blood into the ventricles before they contract then digit, uh, digitalysis have a ecg related effect also that is decrease amplitude of t wave a decrease in the amplitude of t wave result in decrease in the repolarization of ventricle and increase in the pr interval increase pr interval show increased time between atrial and ventricular depolarization and it will lead to proper filling of ventricles it also shows result in the shortening of qt interval qt interval show the ventricular contraction shortened qt interval result in much stronger contraction last one is the depression of st segment it indicates the ventricular depolarization and repolarization i will show you graphically in the next slide before this uh, i will tell you about the vagomimetic action digoxin also show dependent vagomimetic effect helpful in the management of atrial fibrillation digoxin uh, mimic the action of efferent fib uh, fibers of vagus nerve on the heart to keep it healthy and make it efficacy on its normal level to treat heart failure or atrial fibrillation this vagomimetic action is prominent when desire action is to treat or fight against atrial fibrillation the vagus nerve also known as vagal nerve and cranial nerve nerve 10 cranial nerve 10 is the main nerve of parasympathetic nervous system digoxin is therapeutic doses increases discharge frequency from vagus it helps in slowing down and controlling the heart rate it works with minerals in the cells of the heart to reduce strain and keep the heart beating normally we are talking about effectiveness of the vagomimetic action against atrial fibrillation and what atrial fibrillation means atrial fibrillation is an irregular and often very rapid heart rhythm that is arrhythmia 
that can lead to blood clots in the heart. Atrial fibrillation increases the risk of stroke, heart failure, and other heart related complications. Now, here you can see the graphical representation. Uh, in the first one, you can see that uh, a comparison between normal dig digitalizing and a failing heart contracti contractility. And in this second picture, you can see about ECG in which decreased amplitude of T wave, increased PR interval, shortening of QT interval and depression of ST segment. That is all about the action of digoxin on the heart. Now the effect of digoxin on blood vessels. Although digoxin has its main effect on the heart, but its other effect is also known on blood vessels. Digitalis is considered as a mild vasoconstrictor, but have no prominent effect on blood pressure, and that's why it is not contraindicated in blood pressure patient. Digoxin also show some effect on kidneys. Kidneys also show some diuretic action under the effect of digoxin is congested heart failure. Diuresis occurs promptly in CHF patients secondary to improvement in circulation and renal perfusion. Its action is by blocking sodium potassium ATPase and keep the filtrate rich in sodium ion which ultimately increase the water content of filtrate. The retained salt and water is gradually excreted. And no diuresis occurs in normal individual or in patient with edema due to other causes. It shall be remembered that digoxin for treating blood vessels or blood pressure or for causing diuretic action is not applicable because digoxin is a cardiotonic drug last effect of digoxin on cns digitalis has a little apparent cns effect in therapeutic dose higher doses cause ctz which results in the activation of nausea and vomiting still higher doses produce hyper apnea that is a deep breathing central sympathetic stimulation mental confusion, disorientation, and visual disturbance. Clinical Pharmacology Clinical Pharmacology of Digoxin It is a study of drug at clinical level. Drug doses for different effect, clinical application, or use for different diseases at different doses. Or in short, you can say it is all about the relation of drug dose and drug action. Digoxin is used for very specific conditions of atrial fibrillation and heart failure and not for any other purpose. Due to its narrow therapeutic index, very little mishandling or misuse can cause to toxicity. First one is the atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation is an irregular condition of heart with irregular and abnormally increased heart rate and is due to art, uh, atrial structural changes. On general, the dose of digoxin for atrial fibrillation are 8 to 12 micro milligram per kg IV as total loading dose. 50% uh, of which is administrated initially then 25% two times in a period of 6 to 8 hours some with oral dose and the total load, uh, loading dose increases to 10 to 15 microgram per kg person very carefully monitoring is required maintenance dose then is then is 3.4 to 5.1 microgram per kg for oral route you can see it may changes 
on clinical response and intravenous route maintenance doses 0.1 to 0.4 mg once a day in heart failure conditions 0 0.1 to 5 to 2.5 mg orally IV once a day is used and no loading dose is required. Digoxin varies from 62.5 mg to 0.25 mg tablets, 50 to 250 microgram capsule, 50 microgram per ml elixir is also available and 250 microgram is also in use for the therapeutic effect. Here are the different doses of digoxin for different age groups from premature neonatal to 10 year older and for less than 100 kg patient their oral dose, their loading dose, maintenance dose, IV and IM doses. So these all are changes from age to age now the main thing is dose modification dose modification is always required when shifting from parenteral therapy to oral therapy and the dose is reduced by 20 to 25 percent adjustment is required in renal patient due to excretion through renal route in heart failure excessive dose does not increase efficacy but rather cause toxicity bmi or lean body weight must be calculated before dosing now here are the indications contraindications drug drug interactions adverse effect and precaution first we will discuss indications uh, what are indications of digoxin digoxin is indicated in following conditions for the treatment of mild to moderate heart failure in adult patients it is also indicated to increase myocardial contraction in children diagnosed with heart failure to maintain control ventricular rate in adult patients diagnosed with chronic atrial fibrillation it is also indicated in adults with heart failure when it is clinically possible digoxin should be administered in conjugation with the diuretic and an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor for optimum effect then contraindications digoxin is contraindicated in the following conditions that are hypersensitivity to the drug ventricular fibrillation because it is indicated in atrial fibrillation so it is contra entry indication in ventricular fibrillation myocarditis hypokalemia and it is also contraindicated in wolf parkinson's white syndrome then drug drug reactions it is most important to see drug interactions with digoxin are important because of this agent's narrow therapeutic index among the drugs that can decrease digoxin by availability are cholestrimine antacid gel choline pectate and certain antimicrobial drugs and cancer chemotherapeutic agents in selected patients antibiotics may enhance digoxin bioavailability by eliminating intestinal flora that can metabolize digoxin uh, other drug drug reaction is with the drug of anti arrhythmic drugs such as quinidine and amino deron can markedly increase steady state serum digoxin levels certain calcium channel blocking drugs particularly verapamil have a similar effect potassium sparing diuretic drugs such as spironolactone can alter digoxin pharmacokinetics then we have adverse effect digoxin has the adverse effect like rash headache gynomastia weakness photopsia and also includes the digoxin toxicity last one is the precautions its use requires caution in cases of hypercalcemia patient or hypocalcemia patients if a patient is suffering from renal impairment it is very cautionly used diseased SA node bradycardia AB block restrictive 
कार्डियो मायोपैथी कंस्ट्रिक्टिव पेरिकार्डाइटिस एंड द पेशेंट्स डेट आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम थायरॉयड डिजीज दे शुड यूज डाइजोक्सिन विद क्वेश्चन नाउ डाइजोक्सिन टॉक्सिसिटी व्हाट काइंड ऑफ टॉक्सिसिटी कैन इट कॉज एन इंक्रीज इंटरसेलुलर सोडियम अल्टीमेटली रिजल्ट इन इंक्रीज इंटरसेलुलर कैल्शियम एज वी हैव डिस्कस बिफोर and it can increased inotropy the excessive intercellular calcium can result in delayed after depolarization which may result in premature contraction and it can cause dysrhythmias digoxin toxicity can occur in acute or chronic setting now we will see the difference between acute toxicity and chronic toxicity acute toxicity is usually occurs in a younger individuals due to their acute overdose while the chronic toxicity frequently occurs in elderly patient due to either declining renal function or drug drug interactions in patients with acute toxicity their symptoms are nausea vomiting hyperkalemia and dysrhythmias their visual changes are also common and uh, the main symptom is hyperkalemia that is commonly absor- uh, observed in acute toxicity while in chronic toxicity nausea weakness are common findings with the chronic digoxin toxicity uh, in acute toxicity the gastro- gastrointestinal symptoms are also common while no gastrointestinal symptoms observed in chronic toxicity neurological manifestations such as lethargy fatigue confusion and weakness are most common seen and observed in the chronic toxicity now emergency management after toxicity how to manage the patient with digoxin toxicity certainly any patient with an unprotected airway should have advanced airway measures including endotracheal incubation performed and if hyperkalemia or life threatening dysrhythmias are present the patient should receive digoxin immune fab fragments now we will see the specific treatment of digoxin so first priority in treating the digoxin toxicity is treatment in ensuring the patient has an adequate airway and breathing patient should be assessed for the administration of digoxin specific fab fragments that are antibodies effectively reduce the hyperkalemia traditionally the administration of calcium to treat digoxin induced hyperkalemia has been contraindicated it should be noted that digoxin is not removed effectively by extracorporeal elimination techniques including hemodialysis that's is the main specific treatment that you can opt now we will see pharmaceutical dosage forms of digoxin it is mainly uh, available in different forms brand names cardioxin digitron digoxin lenoxin in this lenoxin is the most common available in the market in the form of 250 microgram tablet the manufacturers are here and the type of dosage forms are tablets capsules and injection form here you can see different pictures of different dosage form of digoxin these are references and that's all about the brief introduction of digoxin thank you